Hey guys, this is King Ruthless, and I'm bringing you the third StarCraft cast of the evening. I have decided to go on a casting binge before I get back to work and start uploading videos, and before I go on my vacation. But before I go too much into that, I'm going to go and introduce the two players. So spawning here as the Red Protoss. According to the replay pack, it is going to be none other than OGSMC. Now he is currently gone to the, uh, to the clan SK. I can't remember what that stands for. But uh, he is now SKMC, a very high level Protoss. I think he's won a GSL or two. I mean, that's just the rumor that I hear. But uh, it looks like his opponent for this game is going to be Last Shadow, who's going under the moniker Asildur. And if you know your Lord of the Rings uh, trivia at all, Asildur is the guy in the beginning of the movie. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't read all the books. I read The Hobbit and then kind of grew bored of it. But apparently the other three books are really awesome. I know, I know I'm going to get a lot of hate here. But apparently Asildur is that... Um, you know, the god of men, I guess, or, you know, the hero of men who was able to slay Sar uh, Sauron and then he uh, took the ring and instead of dropping it in Mount Dune, he just decided to wear it. And of course, you know, the ring called out to enemies of Isildur and, you know, he got killed. And then we had those three movies with, uh, with all the awesome hobbits and so on and so forth. We're actually getting another hobbit movie about to come out and... I say another Hobbit movie because I don't know if anyone here is old enough to remember those old, that old Hobbit movie that had uh, Jethro Tull as the uh, background music. I haven't seen it forever, but I just remember being amazing. But of course, this is being as a kid. That movie came out in the 70s. I think I watched it as a kid, you know, sometime during the early 90s. Uh, so it definitely came out before I was born. I am 25 years old, so uh, not quite as old as some of you guys, not quite as young. But uh, that was a pretty amazing cartoon. And it had freaking Jethro Tull as a soundtrack. So I might check that out, actually. But anyways, let's go back into this game. I, I've been kind of going off on a, on a ramble here. Uh, it looks like not much is going on. Last Shadow, by the way, is a very strong Terran player. I think he's uh, a Grandmaster uh, Terran on, on, the, on the Korean server. So this is no one to scoff at. This is no one to say, huh, I play Terran versus Protoss much differently. Well, you're not Last Shadow and you're not... A Korean Grandmaster, so you know, you know where you can, you know where you can shut it. But anyways, kind of looking back here at the uh, game, it looks like not much is going on. So I get to tell you the next part. Um, well, that's actually interesting. Hold that thought there. I was gonna kind of go into my plans for this weekend, which are gonna be me going to Tampa, going on vacation for the next several days, which will mean no uh, StarCraft Two replays. But in fact, wow, man, we have two really early gases after a command center. So, I'm kind of interested to see what he decides to do with this. Uh, I mean, this could be some heavy tech play. I mean, we could see some, uh, you know, cloaked banshees, or I don't see a factory going. I don't know. I mean, we can't afford a factory yet. That's beyond the point. But we do have a bunker going down here. There is only one marine out so far. And is he going to get the scout off? Oh my god, that would be huge if he did. Yeah, he actually sees exactly what's going on. And if NC is, you know, diligent enough, he should get a pretty good count on what is going on here with these gases. In fact, is he going to click on them? I don't know if he actually did or not. That probe will get shut down, and there's a factory going down. Yes, this could potentially be some sort of weird 1-1-1? I don't know. I'm pretty boggled here, guys. So, I mean, for all you Terran players out there that actually play this race and... Oh, yeah, I've done this build before plenty of times. I get a command center, then then I get uh, two gas, and then I get my factory. I'm like, um... I'm kind of confused, to be honest. I, I have no idea what this build means. But, um, MC, you know, meanwhile, is going pretty standard. He's getting a sentry first. Usually you'll see uh, Protosses out there get a Stalker. Be a little bit aggressive with that Stalker, but instead, looks like, um, looks like MC's just going to go for the straight-up sentry play and get that fast robotics facility. Oh, actually, there's a Stalker. I was kind of wondering, like, did he really skip a Stalker and go straight for a sentry? So the first Stalker did kind of go out there, was pushed back by this bunker. Uh, looks like non-stop marine production. There is going to be a tech lab on this factory. I wonder if we're going to see siege tanks potentially. But there's an armory, so I wonder if actually this is going to be Thor's. Oh my goodness, if this is Thor's, that's pretty crazy because I just casted a game with Doom Dash doing a marine Thor kind of craziness. Doom Dash, you might want to take notes here, man. Uh, getting up this uh, orbital is like pretty insane. And think about it. Even if Protoss tries to do this fast expand style and then get up like five gates and try to push you, it's going to be really, really difficult for him to break this, especially when you have Thors back here. So I know that's kind of the norm on the Korean server, you know, with TVP, they're just like, oh, I'm going to expand then five gate and try to kill you. 
Whoa. This is a pretty cool way of dealing with it. Yes, it is a Thor. Holy crap. And the plus one armor. Doom Dash. Doom Dash, did you steal this from Last Shadow? Did you steal this build? It's okay if you did, man, because it's actually a pretty sick build. I like it. That bunker had to be canceled, and that SCP will probably get picked off. Oh, some nice micro from the Marines. Shooing away that Stalker. They're like, no, you cannot kill that SCV. He is part of the uh, of the good guy team. So the SCV will uh, just kind of run back and make another factory. So Thor's about to complete. I wonder if this observer is actually going to scout that there's a freaking armory back here. He does see the Thor pop out. Oh my goodness. What do you do in this situation if you're MC? Looks like he is already making an immortal. I wonder if he's noticed that there's a... a a freaking Thor coming out here. This is insane, guys. And this will be able to hold off any sort of gateway aggression. No, in fact, he's going to go for Stargate. Now, Void Ray in this situation could potentially be dangerous. Uh, Void Rays do uh, some significant damage against Thors. I know that they do uh, bonus damage to armored units, if I'm not mistaken. But Thors, uh, they do bonus damage to light units, so that's why I'm thinking Void Rays, because it wouldn't make sense to go Phoenixes. First off, they can't pick up Thors, and second off, they get bonus damage done to them by Thors. Uh, looks like this is going to be some sort of a mech build. This is crazy, because we do have two factories and only one barracks. And the marine production, it seems to have slowed down. Wow, this is craziness. In fact, that barracks is going to be reproducent, <coughs> so the Thors have an easier time getting out of the base. This is insane, guys. <coughs> In fact, we have another Thor on the way here. For his seal lure, otherwise known as Last Shadow. I'm really loving this build. Getting a little bit supply locked, that's unfortunate. Let's look back at uh, MC's base. He's got four sentries. It looks like two of them uh, have full energy. This guy almost does. And two immortals, so I mean, it wouldn't make sense really for Last Shadow to really push out here. But yeah, of course, he is going for Void Rays. I believe they do bonus damage against armored units. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'm sorry, guys. But he's going for a pretty interesting um, style here where he's getting a lot of immortals, a lot of units that do insane damage against very uh, against armored units. In fact, he is going double Stargate and Chrono Boosting got Void Rays. I want to see this here. Yeah, they do bit damage versus armor, so it's 10 damage. And once that beam gets charged up, it's just insanity. So I'm wondering here if, you know, if, if Last Show is going to continue this production of Marines, because if he just tries to go up straight up Thor, I wonder if he's actually scanned the base. Has he? No, he hasn't in a while, and MC's actually getting a third Nexus, so I have no idea what's going to happen, guys. I mean, we have Thors uh, coming out. We have f five Thors now. Shoot. Five Thors. It looks like the barracks is going to be uh, add-on bitch, because we do have another factory going down, uh, so uh, a couple of Hellions being built here. Now, at this point in time, like five Thors should be enough <coughs> to take out three Void Rays in this measly... Uh, army, but it does have immortals in it, so that's kind of what has me wondering. It would be kind of suicidal for uh, for Last Shadow to kind of push out at this point in time. It makes more sense for him to kind of build up his Thor arm. Oh my goodness, 250mm strike cannons. <coughs> Excuse me, guys, this is insane. I've never seen 250mm strike cannons in a pro match, not at the Korean, you know, pro match level. I wonder if he's going to do potentially do drops, or if he's just going to try to kill off those immortals super fast. Because if he's able to kill off enough immortals to strike cannon all of them, then he's got free reign on this void race. <coughs> and with less immortals there, that means those marines are actually going to do a lot of damage. So I, my my interest is peaked. I have no idea how this build is going to go. In fact, it's pretty much transitioned into solely mech, and a lot of mech armor going down here. He has sort of an engineering bait, I guess, in case he needs missile turrets. So yeah, he does have one missile turret out there, but he's not going to be focusing on bio so much. I'm kind of interested to see when he's going to expand, because you, I don't know if you can kind of two base, you know, max with mech. But of course, MC doing the smart thing here, grabbing three bases against the mecking player. Um, yeah, you do want to stay a base up against your mecking opponent. In fact, he's going for Colossi here. Um, now this will do good against the Hellions, they will melt. But, of course, if this push... Oh, goodness. If this push comes out before he's ready, he's going to be in trouble. So, guys, let's kind of just watch and see what unfolds here. He's pushing out with... Let's look at the unit tab. Eight Thors. That amount of Immortals is not going to do squat. Uh, seven Void Rays. Uh, that could do some you know, significant damage. But a lot of auto-repairing SCVs. And <clears throat> what's unfortunate here is that 
you know, Lasso doesn't have enough, you know, he doesn't have, doesn't have enough energy, really, to do scanning over his army, which would help out, you know, significantly. It looks like the uh, Hellions are going to come in here, start to pick away at these uh, cannons, which will go down really fast. And we do have the Void Ray and Colossus and Immortal Army from MCs trying to split the best that he can, but nice control from both armies. I don't know if there's a way to get rid of that overlay. Do the best job that I can. Here comes the engagement. It looks like they are focus firing the Immortals. So one of the 250mm Meritor Strike Cannons going down, but look at all these Void Rays getting shot down by these swords. That is just insane, and there's still so many Marines out. I wonder if Flash Shadow is going to be able to actually do this. Now the Void Rays are fully charged. There are still four Thors left, and they've been able to kill all the Immortals. Holy crap! All of the Void Rays go down. That was his anti-Thor. Now he doesn't have any anti-Thor. Let's get it back up the uh, production tab. He now has to extend the Thermal Lance, but this space is going to go down. So many probes getting killed by these, oh my god, by these Hellions. This is insanity. So this base getting shot down. That 250mm strike cannon was pretty awesome, actually. I, I am, I'm a huge fan of that. Hellions coming up in here to keep away the Zealots. Really, he's got to be careful right here. He doesn't want to engage too much until he gets the rest of these Thors into the mix. God, Thors are so strong. And I know a lot of Terran players out there crying, Mech sucks against Protoss. You can't mech against Protoss. It's impossible. This just happened. Oh my god, 250mm strike cannon taking down the Colossus. So now the Hellions can come in here and roast the rest of the Zealots. GG gives OGSMC. Oh my god. I can't believe that worked. That was amazing. So that guy was, uh, I guess, you know, one of the ways that you can mech against your Protoss opponent. Notice that Last Shadow did expand and was immediately getting this gas. Um, you know, pretty nice timing on all of this, just continuing the Thor production, getting out his Hellions. Notice the one thing missing from this army was obviously siege tanks. You want to keep all of that gas for all of those Thors and those upgrades. I think he was at plus two vehicle plating. Man, those Thors just did not die. So let's look at the uh, vehicle plating. Yeah, it's got plus three armor, or sorry, an armor of three. So it's pretty insane. Anyways, guys, that'll do it for this cast. Hope you guys enjoyed the replay. I've been your host, as always, King Ruthless. Be sure to rate, subscribe, comment, and favorite. And definitely leave your comments below, because I love reading them. And I will see you guys next time. Peace.